Today we're going to be talking about adding horsepower to your cat diesel engine. Today I wanted to talk about something I've been getting a lot of questions of on the comments and at work. Adding horsepower to your cat diesel engine. The easiest and most effective way to do that is through a re-rate. And uh, a lot of people know of re-rates, but they don't really know much information on them. Um, even a lot of the mechanics don't. So I personally do re-rates at work and I look up the information for them. So I kind of wanted to dispel some of the myths around it. And I wanted to give you some information if you're thinking about it or if you'd like to add some horsepower and don't want to go through the hassle of Trying to go with some aftermarket parts, aftermarket turbos, or like a Pittsburgh power setup, something like that. Now the reason I recommend a re-rate is it is CAT specific. Meaning, CAT has already engineered all the pieces for you. And you can add as much or as little horsepower as you want within a range. So I'm going to go over the charts here with you and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So what we're looking at here is a C7, which is a very common engine in most RVs and small trucks, matrix for horsepower ratings. And these black lines you're looking at that separate the horsepowers uh, horizontally, those are the engine families. Those, if you're in one family, you can't jump to another one. Um, you can if you wish to basically build a whole new engine with new pistons, injectors, everything. So really, you're looking at staying within the family. And I'm going to show you a C15 matrix here, real common ones. So this is a MXS, NXS, and BXS, which are the twin turbo C15s, and their families. Uh, you also notice on the far right, it's going to have designations for ratings. You'll notice on the bottom it says fire trucks, emergencies, and RVs. They always have the highest ratings, and people want to get those ratings, but if you go to any reputable dealer, you're going to have to stay within your family, your engine family, that is. So I'm going to zoom up here, kind of show you more what I'm talking about. So here's that C7. So let's say you're in the bottom tier, which would be C, and you're at a 300 horsepower with 800 torque. The torque is the far right number. But you want to go up to a 300 with 860 torque or a 330 with 860 torque. You're in the same family. And that would only require a flash file change. Or you can, and you can change it. Now if you're at 190, you cannot jump to a different family. So here's what most people are concerned with, C15s. If you have a serial number starting with BXS, MXS, or NXS, and you have any of these horsepower ratings, you can move to any of these other horsepower ratings without changing any hard parts. Now, the thing to notice is, so let's say you're at a 475 with 1650 torque, but you want to go to a 500 with 1850 torque. You're going to have to check that your transmission can support that much torque because the transmissions are typically rated in torque, not necessarily horsepower. So if you have an Eaton Fuller transmission, Look at the data tag, where I've highlighted in yellow, those first two digits are your torque rating. See where it says this X times 100 equals nominal torque capacity. So if your tranny is a 1600 torque, but you want your engine to go to 1800 torque, most dealers aren't going to do that for you because that transmission is not rated to handle that. Also, I'll show you an Allison if you have an Allison or you're in an RV and you're looking at a re-rate. So depending on which Allison you have, it also has, so where I've underlined, that's a 600 horsepower 1850 torque. So be sure to verify that your transmission can also handle the torque. Now getting back to these C15s, these later model C15s are easier to re-rate than the earlier ones. Uh, same with C11s, C10s, any of the electronic engines. The older ones are harder to re-rate because the families are much smaller and it requires different pistons, different injectors, different dampeners based on small jumps in horsepower. So you'd have to contact your dealer, probably talk with or have the mechanic talk with their technical communicator 
to see if you have an older engine what exactly you can move the horsepower to. So why would you want to go with a re-rate opposed to an aftermarket setup? Um, aftermarket does work. Um, you know, I've had customers with aftermarket turbos, aftermarket exhaust manifolds. I've been on a dyno with a Pittsburgh power setup with a dial adjustable horsepower setting, and they actually work. Um, the problem is if you have a warranty, it can invalidate your warranty. Also, these products were not engineered by CAT. So are you decreasing the longevity of your engine? You're definitely typically increasing your exhaust temp, which isn't necessarily good for your exhaust valves or your engine. You're putting more heat out of that engine. Typically, you're not adding life to an engine by pumping more power out of it. So what if you don't know your rating? Well, there's a couple places to find it. First is your engine information tag, which can be located on your valve cover or your front timing cover. That'll have the original rating. However, if your engine has been re-rated in the past, maybe a previous owner's had it, something like that, you'll need to go to a CAT dealer or a CAT certified dealer and have a warranty download done which is a 9 to 13 page download most places do when they first get your truck in or your RV and they'll hook up to it and it'll give them the active codes, it'll give them the engine rating, mileage, serial number, all that. That's the best way to get your rating. There's another way that dealers can look into called TMI, but that's also the original engine rating. Really the best way if you don't know your rating, go to a dealer, a cat dealer, and get a warranty download. Most places, if you just pull up and say, hey, can I get a warranty download, or you want to get a check engine like looked at, or just for the rating, they'll go out and do a download for you for free because it, it really takes five minutes. So is there, are there any dangers with a re-rate? There's basically one danger with a re-rate. The ECM can sometimes become corrupted or blank itself when being re-rated or having a flash file installed into it. Even if you're not re-rating it, say you go into a dealership and they say, hey, your, your engine has a new flash file that could be installed. A new flash file with the same horsepower does not require any monetary value. So say you go in and they flash it with a new flash file or they're re-rating you, that's going to require a new flash file. I'd say one out of about every 30 ECMs that get a new flash file or are re-rated, it wipes the ECM or it corrupts the ECM. And CAT ECMs are not cheap. You're talking anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 for a new ECM. Well, that's a reman ECM, but they're basically new. Um, that is made, that's really the major concern with doing a re-rate is that there's a small chance, but there is a chance that it might damage your current ECM. Um, so be aware of that if you are thinking of going with a re-rate. So what's the price to upgrade your horsepower? Well, adding horsepower is typically very expensive on any engine. Um, anyone that's been in a hot rodding knows that. Um, same with the truck market. If you're looking at an aftermarket turbocharger or turbochargers, exhaust manifolds, intake manifolds, anything like that, you're talking thousands of dollars. Uh, re-rates are not that much typically. Um, usually, CAT charges the dealer a set fee for a re-rate within an engine family. That fee is usually around $250, and then the, the dealer itself will typically charge you the customer and about two hours of labor. They most places charge about five hundred dollars for a re rate which five hundred bucks. That's not a lot of money talking about these engines. Um, you know, if you're looking to get in a turbo or some other power adder, you're talking a lot more money than five hundred bucks. And this is guaranteed. This you will know exactly the horsepower of this engine if they do a re rate opposed to adding some aftermarket thing that you're not going to be sure of.
Well, I hope that answers most of your questions or it enlightens you as to how to add some horsepower to your CAD engine. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you.